Palmas um, de uh, Gran Canaria. Uh, llegué a conocer a esta universidad uh, a través uh, de profesor uh, Sánchez Medina. Uh, aunque mi presentación de hoy es sobre la organización de uh, vehículo, estoy muy interesante del trabajo de uh, profesor uh, de, 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 de uh, simulación y uh, el análisis realizado por el equipo uh, de profesor Sánchez uh, <laughs> Me gustaría encontrar oportunidad de intercambiar y uh, posiblemente la colaboración. Uh, California Pass uh, ha conducido a uh, investigación en los ITS durante 20 años atrás, uh, desde uh, 1986. Uh, tuve la suerte de estar asociado con California Pass desde su inicio. Um, ha sido una gran exper experiencia um, durante los 29 años uh, pasados. Um, ahora me uh, gustaría uh, compartir algunas de estas experiencias con ustedes en inglés. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so I couldn't actually, you know, I, 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 I really love to actually present it in Spanish, but it's, it's going to take me a long time to prepare. <laughs> um, so, um, I want to do the uh, carry on the presentation. Matt was mentioning about uh, University of California. Uh, we have, as Matt mentioned, we have ten campuses and. Uh, um, Berkeley and Riverside are two campuses. And so within the 10, cam 10 campuses, there are about five or, five or six of them actually have a transportation program. And um, uh, working together with the Department of Transportation to get uh, a lot of a, you know, international audience to, to, to show all the technology. So as you can see, this is a, a system that we're, we had a platoon of vehicles that the vehicle to vehicle has a communication system that talking to each other every 20 milliseconds. And we have actually sensor up front that you can see the rail that the Delco Electronic had the radar over there that can detect the vehicle distance. <coughs> and uh, we have in the middle of the land putting a small magnet embedded in the road, which not only gave you the lateral position measurement, but also by alternating the polarity of magnets we're able to actually have the infrastructure to be communication to tell you the road to come, the curvature come ahead, or there's any uh, geometries and stuff. So this 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 vehicle platoon that can do lane changing and everything that actually involving a fully automated uh, driving to develop a lot of railway system. But the locals want the rail because of the status. People taking buses, they were thinking is is working level and versus rail is more of actually business travel uh, community. And uh, so the Federal Transit Administration funded PASS, and the Federal Transit Administration together with Caltrain funded PASS and we developed the technology. And we tested for six months. And the travelers and the drivers and the transit agency really love it. So so I think it came to an earlier question that you know there were uh, question about whether the technology is going to take, how long it's going to take. And I think this type of technology will come into deployment uh, very quickly, uh, probably in the next few years. So with that, and uh, thank you so much for your uh, attention, and sorry that I probably take too much time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is that question? I have to. Um, I'll compare it to driving. Okay. So um, you still uh, you're sticking to, to uh, the use of magnets for for platoon driving, uh, but do uh, you have a plans to, to move uh, you know that kind of birds to regular highways somehow? I mean not, not using dedicated lanes for platoon driving, but uh, regular highways 
Uh, regular highways was with other yeah, traffic. Was, was mixed traffic. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I don't think it's going to be a good idea to have that kind of close spacing. Uh, because I think there's too many situations that could happen that causing the platoon to interact physically with other vehicles, causing multiple you know, crashes and stuff. Um, but with reasonably spaced system, uh, such as what you know, people are starting talking about CACC and so forth. So that would be uh, coming out ready to be solved. Uh, fully automated platooning, and I think the Japanese uh, Energy ITS was planning to do it early on, and then their government stopped it because I think there's safety concern that having that kind of a close interaction with the other vehicles, which you know that the other vehicle would make mistake all the time. Um, I think that's that's a collective effort by everybody. But coming back to the same thing, uh, to the subject that I was actually discussing earlier, that from the system design perspective, all this potential threat <coughs> needs to be factored in in the design. And uh, you 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 minimize the hazard through the design, then you design the prevention method into the system where you can actually avoid the hazardous consequence with something like that. Okay. Well, thank you. This automated vehicle for about close to 30 years. Um, we don't have, I mean, the university typically would do proof of concept of testing. But we don't actually develop a prototype that is going to go production. So we do actually work with the industry. For example, currently we have a project that working with uh, Valio and uh, some European car makers to develop a uh, testing system. Um, we also, in fact, we're going to actually be discussing some of the work that we have been doing. Um, this very different concept that we actually were evaluating. Um, but to directly answer your question, we don't have a prototype system actually running on the street right now. Yeah, I agree with what Matt was saying, uh, that the automated vehicle will come at a different stage, at the different uh, functionalities, uh, starting from now. But I think fully automated vehicles does take 15, 20 years to come out, except that for some special applications. Uh, for example, we have been actually working with transit industry to automate the transit operation, just like a train. And that can be actually happening in the next few years. Um, there are some specific applications on truck automation, and those can come into uh, play in the real world in a few years. Um, but the come to a car that driving with mixed traffic, it would actually take a longer time. Yeah, the communication system does require uh, government support, um, which in this particular case, um, that the bandwidth need to be mandated by uh, or regulated by the federal government or by state. Um, so what we actually have seen that in the U.S., for example, um, the U.S. Department of Transportation at the end of last year have decided to go through the uh, regulation process for the bandwidth for DSRC dedicated short range communication. And following that, uh, the car makers, for example, General Motors made an announcement last year in July that the cars will roll out with communication device in 2017. So it's two years from now, the production car will have a communication system. So there is a little bit of chicken egg problem as what you were actually asking about. And I think that it has become uh, begin to actually resolve those issues. So we are seeing this government uh, get involved and the, uh, the car makers are beginning to actually put in the communication system into the vehicle. And once that become, uh, I guess, more populated, uh, it's, uh, the penetration growing and so forth, we will see more applications to be, um, to be deployed. I really haven't seen too much I got here yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think that, you know, this is a beautiful island. I think the, the congestion is always a problem it's everywhere. And uh, um, unless, I mean, the, um, the automation, is, the technology improvement is one of the, uh, you know, the, the uh, 
growing uh, trend that that we will be actually seeing. But at the same time, what we see is that the um, the transportation system, the infrastructure, um, is is growing. It's always slower than the traffic congestion growth. So what actually tells us that we somehow have to actually trying to reduce the demand. And by doing that, um, then you would actually be able to see less fuel consumption, less emissions, and uh, to, you know, the smoother traffic. So what we actually start uh, advocating is to have not just the transportation specialists to work with the infrastructure to provide service and stuff, but also having the uh, travelers to be part of the solution so they can actually be motivated to work with transportation system. So I think that that's actually is, is it will be a full solution, not just to, uh, to put more cars on the road.